2003. We're in Brazil. The idea that you were going to fight Hoyler Gracie seemed so crazy to me. Just deep, knowing what I know about the Gracies, knowing what a legendary family they are, to see you, my best friend, standing there with Hoyler Gracie, and you guys are about to grapple. I'm like, and we're in Brazil. I'm like, dude, this is a fucking trip. And Eddie wound up catching him in a triangle. Pull the head! Pull the head! Oh my god! Oh my god! It was just madness. Like, oh shit, what? We, we couldn't even believe it. We tapped one of the greatest guys of all time. He's the legend. I can't believe I won. I can't believe I won. It was a whole new world opened up. So all of a sudden it was like, whoa, this is weird. I'm Eddie Bravo, and this is uh, actually my real crib. This is what happens when you beat a grappling legend like uh, Hoyler Gracie. You just make a lot of money. That's right, that's right. There's no money in jiu-jitsu. There's no money in jiu-jitsu. Should've went to college. You see Eddie? And without no further ado, boom, hit the music. I grew up a poor Mexican kid. Uh, my mom had to raise three kids in, uh, with $150 a week. Uh, my real father was never around. He had 18 other kids, so... <laughs> uh, he didn't have that much time for me. My dad wasn't around as a playboy, and my stepdad didn't like me. It's a big fucking deal. I don't feel sorry for myself. But it did shape me, because as a kid, you don't know. As a kid, you're just like, fuck, nobody loves me and shit. I got obsessed with Kiss, early Motley Crue, early Iron Maiden. Started playing in bands. I um, Wrote songs and everything. Got ready for a concert, and nobody showed up. And we broke up. And then I got really into speed metal. Started playing drums in speed metal bands, me and Matt. That's, that was our dream, to conquer the world with our speed metal band. By the time I, I hit 18, 19, I was burnt out on the speed metal, started secretly getting into The Cure and Depeche Mode, and, and uh, you couldn't really admit it, because when you're a metalhead thrasher, you can't admit that you like uh, The Cure. I heard, I heard Anthrax and Public Enemy get together, and they did Bring the Noise, and that was speed metal and rap. And I thought, man, there needs to be a band doing this stuff. I thought, I'm gonna move to Hollywood, I'm gonna sell my drums, I'm gonna play guitar, and uh, put together a band like that uh, Anthrax Public Enemy collaboration, that little one-off. But more though, add synthesizer, electronica, synthetic drums, not just natural drums, just everything, but that was the spark. We moved to Hollywood, we made the big move, so sure this was gonna make it. The band was called Black and Kill Symphony. Very Nine Inch Nails influence. Now we're 91, 92, and that was it. We were gonna make it. And uh, I wanted to look good on stage, for, you know, in, in those arenas. So I uh, s joined a gym. I remember seeing Ingve Malmsteen, some a Swedish guitar god rock star, seeing him on stage and he got really fat. I'm like, oh no, we gotta stay in shape. So initially I joined a gym. Last 10 minutes, I, real quick I realized I am not lifting weights. I thought, okay, it, it's time to do some kung fu and, and, and time to, you know, because I was a big Bruce Lee fan big, massive Bruce Lee fanatic. I started doing karate to stay in shape, and that was kind of cool. And then I saw UFC uh, 2. My buddy James, my music partner, the guy I went out to Hollywood with, comes up to me and goes, man, dude at Guitar Center said that UFC Ultimate Challenge thing was real, man. I go, it was real? It looked, it looked uh, really? He goes, yeah, he said some, 
some Iranian choked everybody out. He was just grabbing him by the throat with two fingers and just choking out right at the trachea. I'm like, what? No way. I go, what about karate dudes? Because I was doing karate. He goes, he beat every style. He beat every style. Fuck. Shit. I was so pissed. And of course, he was talking about Ho Hoist Gracie, the Brazilian. I hated Hoist Gracie, he was just beating karate guys and kung fu guys. Like, ah, who is this guy? I was sold by, by that point. I'm like, okay, fuck karate. I gotta go find some of this jujitsu shit. I remember seeing a jujitsu school in the valley here in LA. So I show up to the school, I'm ready to sign up. So a dude gives me the paperwork, his, his name is Chadwick Min. She was the head instructor that gives me the paperwork. I sit down and I, he goes, you came at a perfect time, class is about to start. They all come out, there's all these people. They have black keys, so I thought that was kind of odd. I'm like, oh, had white key. Maybe this is a different kind of jujitsu. I'm watching this, the class and they're not doing any groundwork. They're like doing like Kung Fu stuff. And I asked the head instructor when he passed by, I said, hey, uh, how come you guys aren't doing any ground stuff? Isn't this jujitsu? He goes, oh, you're talking about that Gracie jujitsu. Their cousins, the Machados, are here in the valley you, if you want their number. And I didn't want to offend them. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I like, I like what you guys are doing. I like this. But in my mind, I was thinking Machado. You're going too fast, Derek. He's an old man. Respect your elders, okay? Just because you're 14, don't think you're all bad, all right? Or 15. 14. Damn. Time flies. And then master the roll. Feet up and then master the roll. Come on. Today we're going to do three drills, all based on building posture. That's it. Just posture. So, um, Ray Ray, the first one, the guy on top, I don't want you to sit back for ankle locks. Uh, I don't want you to do anything, no submissions, no nothing. All I want you to do is stand up and totally disengage. Stand up and disengage. Ready? Posture, total posture. Sit, posture, leaning back. Man, I, I was like, who's that fine girl just to walk? <laughs> I saw the bun, I was like, damn. She lied. I thought you were Mila Kunis when you walked in with your shade. She fine. Mila Kunis, are you kidding? Ready? You know who Mila Kunis is? Mila, she's the one from, uh, damn. She married Ashton Kutcher. Think about how hot she is. Think about that. Ready? Go! You know, when I first moved to Hollywood, my uncle Tony said, you know what the odds are? He goes, you could go to college, you're smart. And he goes, you know the odds of making it in music are like one in a million? I said, I'm that one in a million. And he was like, he was like oh my God, go, go to Hollywood. And I went. We get to Hollywood. Me and James, we didn't even have a band. I put together all the music, he rapped on it, I sang a little bit, that was the first Black and Killed Symphony demo. Went to Guitar Center and buy those books with, that have the addresses to all the record labels and shit, and I just fluttered all of them with tapes. And right away, Rachel Matthews from Hollywood Basic is a Disney label, it's some, some serious business. Right away, they said, when are you playing? We want to come check you out. I'm like, we didn't even have a band yet. Like, damn, this is happening way too quick. They go, we like what you're doing. You're mixing up this uh, rap and this and metal. Like, it's, like it's, we like it. We want to see. We want to see you guys. 
So we did this gig, but we were so untight. I was so nervous backstage. Rachel Matches showed up with Steve Jones. Boom, they came up, they were sitting right there. I'm like, oh shit, everything I ever wanted is right here. In the first song, they get up and they walk the fuck out. They, I, we watched them all get up and walk out. And we were <laughs> and never heard from them again and just, we were devastated. But we kept going and kept evolving and kept tightening up the music and all that stuff. And uh, meanwhile, I'm doing jiu-jitsu at the same time. When I walked into Jean-Jacques Machado Academy for the first time, RCJ Mach Machado is what it was called back then, in the back of my mind I was thinking, okay, either this is primitive wrestling, because Hoist didn't fight no wrestler, not in UFC 1 or 2, he didn't fight any wrestlers, that didn't come to later. Uh, either it's primitive wrestling or super advanced wrestling. And I went in there and I got choked 37 times by a purple belt, Dave Meyer. He just was just put a clinic on me. And uh, most people run when that happens to them. Most people's DNA will go activate like their primal monkey DNA to say, listen, you just got humiliated here. Everybody in here, you are the weakest one in this room. You need to get the fuck out of here and never be exposed like that ever again. Get out. That's what most, most people's DNA says. And uh, when I got tapped out 37 times, I didn't run. Like everyone who stays, we think the same thing. Like, wait a minute, I can learn how to do this to, to guys that walk in off the street? That was my first goal was like, whoa, I want to get good enough to do what you did to me. That would be amazing. You did anything you wanted to me. I couldn't stop you. I go, I just wanted to beat the dude that had one, that had zero experience. I wanted to be able to run a clinic on it. That was my first goal. If I could do that, because I knew most of the world was that guy. Look at this. Whoa. What now? What now, Mr. Flexi Man? Oh, shit. No, you didn't. Man, that was nice. Do it again. Let me see. Let me see. You were here. We just brought that thing all the way over. Hey, get it. Put yourself in a dead orchard for that camera right there. Cinch it up. That's a self-inflicted dead orchard right there. Just try it yourself. It's easy. Try it. You should be dead orcharding people right away, too. This should be the stuff we were working on with Ben. You should jump in on that because you're going to be dead or you're going to be a dead orcharder. You know, you only a, a few people can be do dead orchard players. You got to be a long legged, super flexible guy. You got to have long legs. I can't dead orchard people every now and then if I'm rolling with a tiny person. Uh, I could dead orchard, but I'm not a dead orchard player. Uh, you are, man. You are. I ended up tracking down the Jean-Jacques Machado Academy and uh, just got obsessed and got, uh, fell in love with it. But real, real quick, I realized that uh, when we're in the gym and we're practicing jiu-jitsu, the people on the bottom and the people on top, but for sure the people on the bottom are grabbing the collar and they're grabbing the sleeve and working off collar and sleeve control. Like That's their fighting stance. And I thought, hmm, how is that gonna work in the UFC? How's this gonna translate if, they don't, if their opponents don't have collars and sleeves? And really quick, I thought, and they could punch an elbow. That's a lot of stuff that's different. And really quick, you started seeing one, you know, Hoist caught everybody off guard. Nobody was working on the ground and he just wrecked everybody. But when your opponent starts really learning what you're doing and, and addressing the situation and getting to grappling himself, then, if you, then those grabbing the collar and grabbing the sleeve habits, that, they're gonna matter and they do matter. And that's why even today, even to all this time, even today you don't see any Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts with amazing guards, amazing bottom games. You just don't see it. You see bread and butter, basic, maybe hard to pass, good guard recovery, but no one is really attacking with any kind of system or anything. And that's because most Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts, they believe 
that if they train in the gi, somehow it's just gonna work out in, in MMA. It's just gonna work out and it'll work out. The gi's gonna make that shit better. And I don't believe that. Thug should be throwing some head kicks. And she just falls right to her back. It's good when you have a guard like Ben Saunders, but she's got a lockdown. Oh, look at that. She's going to pass. She should be passing more. Oh, no, Ben's here. We got to go. Oh, Ben's Oh, you know what? We'll start when Ben's ready to go. Ben's. We'll start when Ben's ready to go. Five minutes. My name is Ben Killaby Saunders. I'm a professional mixed martial artist, and uh, right now I'm currently in Los Angeles training with the infamous Eddie Bravo at 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu headquarters. She tapped! She choked her! She tapped. Jesus Christ, that was a brutal beatdown. Thank you, dude. We gotta train now. <laughs> Uh, jokingly, I do say uh, the infamous Eddie Bravo because, in my opinion, man, he's been basically in the game since the beginning. You know, he had some, some times where, you know, he, he was on the foreground and actually commentating or giving his scorecards in certain UFCs. But above all, his, his uh, evolution of the jiu-jitsu side of the game, understanding that for MMA or, or street fight self-defense situation, um, not taking hits is a big part of it. And on top of not taking hits, how to set up your submissions from the clinch game. Um, I believe his system that he created is, uh, is absolutely brilliant. It's a, it's a game changer in my opinion. Um, and it really does make me feel like, uh, you know, I'm a part of evolution. Beautiful. That's it. Again. When I uh, started analyzing all this, I just started looking at, okay, what is the best guard for MMA? What do you what do you have to do? First we need what is first we need to shut down the strikes. How do we shut down the strikes? You just look at Henzo and you just look at uh, Hickson. Look at their fighting stance. The fighting stance is important. All right? Because if you're gonna fight in a kickboxing match where you're standing like this. But when you train, you're training like Kung Fu and you're doing Kung Fu movement, that's not smart. In my opinion, if this is the fighting stance and this is your defense, you have to work your offense off that fighting stance. If you're training your jiu-jitsu for MMA, that must include your bottom game clinching as if they were gonna punch you. If you don't have sweeps off those clinches, then you're not gonna sweep anybody in MMA and that's why you don't see it. So that's where the rubber guard came from, that's where it was born from, that's where my, my lockdown half system all stems from. It's all clinching to stop punishment, but moving from clinch to clinch inch by inch, avoiding getting uh, damaged and setting them up to finish them or sweep them. That's the only way it's going to work in MMA. That's the only way and that's what's going on right now and that's, that's what I've been doing the last 10 years is focusing on that. I tapped out Hoyler and immediately I was like miserable at my job. I'm 33, like fuck. I should have sold 10 million records by now. Felt like a total failure to my, my family and my friends back home. Like, how's that Hollywood music thing going? <laughs> a friend of mine said, man, you should, you should walk away from that job and open up a school, man. I'll help you, I'll buy the mats. Let's do this, this is the time. This is, you gotta strike right now. Walk away, so I walked off that show. I quit. I would rather be broke and teach, be my own boss. I just realized it right there, I just realized it. Like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna teach jujitsu and be my own boss and not worry about shit. Put your head on the ground. Yeah. While all the jujitsu was going on, uh, Hoyler 2003, that blows up. 10th Planet was born, and then little by little I'm adding schools and growing the association to now about 60 schools or some, something like that. Uh, um, the music never stopped. I've been producing music the whole time. The difference now is 
people know me through jujitsu. They, they know me as the sports dude. I appreciate everything that my, my jujitsu has got me, got me off the grid, making all my money off jujitsu and teaching. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm my own boss. I, I love that. I love that. I approached EBI pretending that I had a shot to put a jiu-jitsu show on TV. That makes you know, oh, this dude's about to talk some fucking vengeance shit. What 55-pound tournament has $20,000 on the line? Most of the BJJ community is still resistant. Who doesn't want to see two dudes go for the kill? You kidding? This is EBI 5. And I thought, let me build an empire.